to worship him. As we take a moment of silence, a holy silence, in knowing that the Lord our God is in this place, in knowing that the Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth keep silence before him. Let me right at this time. We want to allow, because Jesus is already here, but we need to be silent. We need to be quiet and get ready for the service to come.
Blessed be the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Chicago 
yesterday and sharing one of my friends and who's the mother of one of my mothers, uh, Aaron Keith Washington, and uh, I'm asking you to pray for the family. Uh, pray for uh, Essie Jones, she was a student at Jubilee Temple Senior Church. Uh, wonderful and blessed lady. Her funeral is coming Saturday. As we pray for COVID victims, even now, even now, we had a time to go to see one of our pastors of the senior church in Chicago district. Some of y'all may have met him, some of y'all may have him. His name is Pastor David Bryan. He is the pastor of Allen Metropolitan Senior Church. And he's in the hospital waiting for a transplant. He's had a stroke. He's had COVID. And he is just there. I had a chance to see him. He was able to recognize him, but he's losing a little weight. And he's, uh, he was just glad for the only ministers to go see him now. And I ask you to put him on your prayer list. And I ask everyone to bring to you on your prayer list. Put some names outside of you and a few of your family. Put his name in there. David Bryan. Yes, I'm about to say that. And we talked about that. Because the funeral was at his church. And he's the same one that came in this pulpit gave us a blessed time in, in the congregation Amen. on March the 15th, 2020. Yes, the last service we had, yes. this church came and blessed us. I was in, in the hospital. I was dealing with it. And so I ask that you, as the family of Allen, for the family of Allen, bless us, the family of Miles, pray for him. He gets through. He gets praying for it. also another pastor in our district, Pastor David Bryant. I mean David Green. He is the pastor of the one that we have uh, in D.C., Wisconsin. You know somebody right now that needs prayer. They're not doing well. I just got a phone call today and I heard from Caitlin. Caleb wasn't doing well this morning. And had to be right there, stop everything, and pray for her and Rita. That Caleb knows that God is still God. The God of healing. The God that can bring. He brought her through all this time. All right now. And so I ask you to be in prayer, special prayer, for Caleb. Pray for all our sins, and shut in, pray. For sinners, pray for backsliders, pray for the unchurched, and the three M's, the missing members of life. Pray for us as a family. Pray for all churches around the world. Pray for our, as our new presiding elder, Dr. Tiggs. Washington will be seen very soon. When you give, give as if God has blessed you. And he has blessed everybody. Amen? Amen. God has blessed everybody. God has been blessing to us all, all around. So I ask you to be in prayer and be praying for everybody. Let's bow our hands. I wear this prayer shawl today in honor of my friend who around Christmas time we were in Chicago. 
he was at the church. He said, bro, come on, come on, I want to preach it. He gave Carla a drapery and gave me this Jewish prayer.
watching us. Say amen. 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 Thank you, Father. I should have all the people who are here. We want to see you for the message that this year we're looking for more people who want to get into the Word of God in Bible study and in Sunday school. I don't know about you, but God wants all of us to grow. Grow in the world. Grow in Christ. And that means we got to take time in our Bible study that we have on Wednesdays, 1 o'clock and 6 o'clock on Zoom. On Sunday school, we have to be on As we just be on there, you have the how to get on by um, Zoom. We are talking about when we will be back here in person to person to our show. We ask that you all start thinking this year. This year, I'm going to get more into the Word, get more into Christ. Amen. We ask that you continue to think of somebody that should be right there.
that song. And then she tore it up. She did. Yes. Are you ready for the word? Amen. Amen. Are you ready for the word? Amen. Give God praise for the word of God. All my life. There's a word from the Lord. Open your Bibles now. I've asked people to start bringing your Bibles. I mean, how many people have to get Bibles? Amen. Start bringing your Bible. And I want you to look with me. You can have your phones to look. Go ahead. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Heard it from the New American Standard Bible by Jonathan. I want you to look at verse 19 where Paul is speaking to Timothy. Give my greetings to Silla and Pula and those living in the household of Nesiphorus. The righteous stay at Corinth. I left from a few demons sick in the legions. But look at verse 21. Verse 21. Do your best to get here before winter. Just want to pause right there. Do your best to get here before winter. From that text comes this message. Winter is coming. Get prepared now. Winter is coming. Get prepared now. On this August summer day. Mm. There is no sight of snow. There is no cold air outside. Nowhere. But it's very important that you prepare now for winter. Amen. Paul was chairing with Timothy in verse 13 of that same chapter that he wanted him to go and bring his coat and some parchments of books and things that he needed. He was in prison at the time. He's told Timothy again, I hope you get here before winter. Before winter. Before between November and February. In this part of the country. I'm not talking about Florida. I'm not talking about California. Oh, I'm not talking about places that stay warm all season long. We are Midwesterners, and we in the area where there's a thing called snow and a thing called cold. Amen. Amen. Real cold. I've heard, and you probably heard people from Alabama and, and other places down south, uh, where if they get a sprinkle of two inches of snow, they close all the schools down. They close, close everything down. It has to be almost 10 inches of snow, 20 inches of snow before we close anything down. There was a great poet named Maya Angelou that says, hope for the best and be prepared for the worst. Zig Ziggler said in the same tone, expect the best, prepare for the worst. And many times, we have not done that. 
We wait till the last minute to start preparing for things that we know are coming. Amen. We know that there's a winter coming. Now, I'm, gonna say, I'm not going to guarantee anything, but you need to be ready for more freezing temperatures, snow that's, that's going to come like crazy, and you able to go anywhere. Your summer months, you just be behind. Mm -hmm. This is also a time when the church, at that time, during winter time, many churches, including us, attendance falls due to the fear of falling on, on slipping doing things like that. And we see snow and we see things that's going to take place. We all come. We all come to church. But we need to ask ourselves, are we prepared for winter? Prepared for winter. I hope that when the first snow you see, you remember this message, prepare for winter. <laughs> Some of y'all already know that you know, pastor's a little bit cold. You know, he says he can't stand the cold at all. <laughs> this time, all of us get ready for winter. And as Paul was telling Timothy, come before winter to get the coats on and ask him. There are four important things I want you to prepare. Prepare before winter time comes. If you do, Satan won't get you. God, I'll tell you right now, when the snowfall comes, some of us, we say, oh, we hear a little voice say, oh, it's too cold outside. <laughs> oh, the snow's coming. We no heat out in the snow. It's so slippery. It's going to be slippery outside. If you do not think of this now, this is helping everybody who are coming today because it's nice outside. I'm going to see you in November. All right. Every Sunday. I'm going to see you in December. Every Sunday. I dare anybody <laughs> tell the employer on a Monday morning uh, 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 boss we saw how it is outside. Uh, can't get, you know I can't get out there. He or she will tell you, uh, you better find a way. You may not have a job. Oh, okay, boss, I'll be there. It's time right now to tell, time to gather, time to give, and time to Time to tell the gospel of Jesus Christ to somebody. Amen. We all need to tell somebody today, this week, about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Time to tell them he came. Time to tell them, tell them he died. Time to tell them. He rose from the dead. Amen. Time to tell them. He's coming back again. Amen. For winter time is coming. Winter time is coming. We can say, oh, I, I, I could tell them. We don't know what winter may bring in that person's life. That may be their last time. You need to tell somebody. You need to tell them the gospel. Amen. Are you afraid? Are you scared? As some young people say, are you scared? Because <laughs> of the gospel we hear. Amen. Because of the gospel, it changed our lives. Because of the gospel, we don't have as bad of a life as we could have if we didn't have the gospel. In our lives. God, you yeah, yeah. God, you yeah, yeah. I tell you right now, I'm a different person with the gospel than without the gospel. Amen. Amen. You are a different person 
with the gospel than without the gospel. And we got scores of people who still think they got one more day that's not guaranteed. Amen. Amen. One more day that's not guaranteed. You know and I know. We already been from here from January to, to August. We've seen loved ones, friends that have already passed away, already gone. And they may have thought, oh, I got one more, I got, I got one more day. And found out they didn't have no days left. Mm -hmm. I don't know if everyone that you know will see winter. Amen. So it's time to tell them about the gospel of Jesus Christ while they have time. Time to tell. It's a time to gather or assemble. Time to gather together to worship the Lord, to give and get from the people around us. Did you know every time we come to church, every says someone is giving you something and you are giving to someone. Right. It's not always a one-way street. Too many people come to church and want everybody to give them something and don't want to give anybody. Every time you come, you are giving your presence. You are giving your smile. You are giving your gift. You are giving something that because you are here, they got. That will help them through the day. That will help them through the week. That will help them when winter time comes. Amen. Amen. Or oh, the song that we just sung, that we just heard. That will take you a long way. Mm -hmm. We need to gather. Hebrews 10 25 says, And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now the day of his return is drawing near. We need the fellowship of believers. We need the encouragement to keep going. We need to learn how to grow up in Christ yeah. and not grow old in church. Amen. Amen. We need to discern the false teachings that are going on. And if you come together, you have understanding. Oh, that, 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 understand, oh, that's, not, that's not Christ. We gather together to prepare because we know that the Lord is coming yeah. one day. Yeah. We know that he said, I'm coming back again. Even for the time of the rapture in which we all will go up. In a twinkling of an eye. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And we who are alive will be cut out. Yes, amen. To meet the Lord in the air. That is coming soon. Very soon. We need to be prepared. I don't know if we're going to see where before he comes. But we need to prepare now because winter is coming. Winter is coming. And then we need to have a time and prepare before winter to give. Give resources that God has given us. We used to sing here during the time of offering. I would take the offering tray and Take it up, bring, took it up to the Lord. And we say, all things come to what? All things come up to thee, O Lord. No my own. Have we given thee? Yeah. Second Corinthians 9, 7 says, You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves yeah. a person who gives cheerfully. Yes. You should be glad that you're able to give unto the Lord. Yes, amen. Remember that, that after that verse, it also says, and God will generously provide all you need amen. and plenty left over to share with others. Yes, amen. God amen. wants us to be in a position that right now 
we have more than enough and able to give to somebody else. Yes. You can't give if you are, 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 are in need all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you need to give here first so that God can give you. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Praise God. Because, because when word comes, again, too many times, folks, that, that's the first thing that they, they don't do. That's giving. They go and say, well, all I got. I'll pay my life bills. My life bills too to do. But if you give now, if you give now, whether it's your conference claim or anything, you know that God will take care of you. Amen. I heard and I got a little illustration that when every dollar you get, there's a tithe or 10 cents in that dollar. And I ask the question, is God Worth the doubt. Amen. 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 Is God worth the doubt? So, we time. I say time to tell, time to assemble, time to give. But also, because which is coming, a time to repent. Repent. To turn our lives more towards Jesus than sin. More towards Jesus than the world. More towards Jesus than ourselves. Many times we don't want to admit that we still got some sins in our lives that we need to talk to God about. We need to have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all our troubles and our sins. And let him Clean us up. Amen. Clean us up. Too many times we, we think that sin will just clean up by themselves. No, you need to repent. Mm -hmm. Repentance is godly sorrow for our sins. Confession of it. That's why the next two or three weeks, every Sunday, we'll say that little line about the prayer of confession. Because we need to confess. We need to tell God. I'm not there yet. I need to confess. Jesus said, as Matthew said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Amen. The kingdom of heaven is near. We told him not only at the time that he was here on earth, Jesus was saying to the seven churches in Revelation, repent. Yeah. Repent. We told him Revelation 2.5. If you don't repent, I will come and remove the lampstand from its place among the churches. Lampstand at that time was a, a thing of a light. Mm -hmm. All churches have a light. Yes. Shine in the world. Guess what? You have a light shining in your life. Amen. We sing that song, this is a light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. But we need in order to, to, to shine, we need to repent. So that for people will not see the dirt and see Jesus. Winter time is coming. Winter time is coming. As I close at closes, Paul charged Timothy to come before winter. Let you know Rockford will have winter. We will have winter, I'll tell you right now. It may be worse than the worst we've had in the past. Mm -hmm. You can't say, oh, last year we had we had that much snow. Oh, last year wasn't that cold. Uh-uh. Winter's coming. Yeah. And you need to be prepared, not only with your coats and your scarves, a hair on your head, and coat on your ears, but you need to tell to assemble, to give, and to repent. Amen. Winter is coming, church. Amen. Are you prepared? Winter is coming, church. Are you prepared? Let us pray. Father, you have told us, even warned us, that winter is coming. We cannot say, oh, it may not happen. 
the Lord, we know that we live in, in an area which winter do come, does come, and we know that it can get bad here. The Lord, you're pricking our hearts and saying, we need to tell. We need to assemble. We need to give. And we need to repent before winter comes. Not only on us, but on people. Who will be cold hearted and will act as if they don't need God in their lives. Lord, Holy Spirit, drive us. Holy Spirit, put the fire in us to tell, to assemble, to give, and to repent. We say this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God praise and all the glory. There may be somebody here. Because the guy that kind of on the top of the of over the door did not say, sinner, 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 Christian, 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 and say that. And I do not know where your soul is. I'm just a preacher that wants you to know Jesus loves you Amen. right now. Wherever you are, Jesus loves you. Yeah. He died on the cross for you and me. Rose again from the dead for you and for me. And it's coming back again for you if you give your life to Christ. If there may be someone that have not done that, will you raise your hand? By faith, raise your hand and say, I need Jesus. I need Jesus before winter comes. You. God loves you. But we do not I want you to wait until it's convenient to give Christ your life. Now is the time to do ABC. Admit that you are a sinner. Believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins and rose again from the dead and will save you right there. Amen. And see, commit, commit, commit your heart to Jesus. Now is the time. And I pray you don't wait until winter comes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Heaven, will you come? There are many times we have seen people by your emotion or just by the fact that the serving got to them. They come forward and say, I want to join this church. I want to be a member. I want to serve Jesus. They'll come maybe once or twice and then you look around and you don't see them anymore. I have to give credit that heaven has not been that way. Amen. 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 She could have lashed with her and say, I, 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 I thought I would to be here, but you have been sure that you want to be at this place, at this church. It says, the love, the church of God, and will be preserved to the end of time for the promotion of his worship and the due administration of the Lord and the maintenance of Christian fellowship and discipleship of discipline, the edification of believers, conversion of the world, transformation of social, 
political and economic structures so as to make possible a full realization of personhood and peoplehood. All of every age and station stand in constant need of the grace which it alone supplies. The persons standing before me have received the sacrament of baptism as God has Amen. Those for whom the discipline required it have been instructed in the teachings of the church. Today, they are here to publicly profess the faith into which they were baptized. Do you, yeah, yeah, do you confess as you did your baptism that Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord? Of your life, do you pledge that you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures? Do you have been taught in the necessity of growing in the faith and the necessity for service according to the grace you have to live a Christian life? Say yes. Will you be subject to the discipline of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church and be loyal to it and will uphold the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church by prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? The Lord will finish you with his heavenly grace and by his spirit confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ. The love I commend to your love and nurture care, this child of God in Christ, who we receive into membership of this congregation. You are important to their well-being in the community of the faithful. I beseech, therefore, do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. The love is a great hour of rejoicing. I invite each member of this congregation to let this person know of the pleasure and delight you have in their being members of this congregation of God's people. Amen. As a sign of your pleasure, we turn around. Repeat after me, church. We rejoice, we rejoice to recognize you, to recognize you as, member as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ. Of the Church of Jesus Christ. We truly, we truly and, sincerely and sincerely welcome you, welcome you to this congregation, to this congregation of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. Of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. You have given us an opportunity. You have given us an opportunity to begin anew. To begin anew. We thank you for it. Thank you, Lord. With you, we renew our vows. With you, we renew our vows. To uphold the Church of Jesus Christ. To uphold the Church of Jesus Christ. As expressed. As expressed. In this, in this congregation. In this congregation. By our prayers. By our prayers. Our presence. Our presence. Our gifts. Our gifts. And our service. And our service. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, heaven. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Of miles and more.
We ask that you, as we go out, that you put your offerings and your prayer list in, and that you would also, uh, the, the black parties that's here today, uh, we go out and we have some people that are going out our parking lot, so that would be fine. Have one more announcement? Yes. Okay, then Sunday school will be off to an hour later. Right. Okay. Two o'clock. Okay. Yes. yes. Praise God. There's not anything else. Good to see you, Kate. We all pray. I'm going to say right now, we saw a brother here last week. We saw others. Now I'm going to tell y'all something real quick before I go. Some of y'all don't know what I've been going through lately. I had a car that was acting up on me. For five weeks, I had troubles getting around. Couldn't get around at all. Um, it was a tire or a battery or then it came transmission. Couldn't even get from one chip to the other. Y'all know what that means. That means, uh, and believe it or not, I had 180,000 miles on that car. Well, I said, Lord, what you going to do? What you going to do? I went to a dealership. And I went on and called them with them and said, we need a car. I said, we need a 2022 car. 2022. And you know how inflation was going. You know how things been going right here. You can't get a car right now. What is your, what, what, what were you thinking about, Roy? Praise God, this past Friday. After everything went on, after things they looked at this, looked at that, looked at my career, looked at the car was pressing. Wait, wait, why are they here? Why are they here? Praise God. In the garage right now, the 2022 spa. Right now, a 2022 spa. Hallelujah. God is good. So you see a bird car, a bird orange car rolling around here. Just waiting to pray about it. So he knew I needed this before with it. Hey! Don't get me started now. Let us praise God. Pray. God from whom. Give God a break.